becomes kind of hard to love your job when no one seems to like you for doing it. Wreck-It Ralph is a story about how to be yourself in a universe where you're very much not free to do whatever you want. The characters in Wreck-It Ralph live pre-programmed lives. Their social roles, their backstories, even their personalities are written into their code. I'm a wrecker. I wreck things. And if you look closer, the message the movie sends is a little surprising for a feel-good comedy. Essentially, it tells us we should fall in line and obey our programming. Get with the program. I don't want to be the bad guy anymore. You can't mess with the program, Ralph. This may sound like an oppressively conformist moral. The rules are there for a reason, Vanellope. But it's actually pretty applicable to our reality. In certain ways, we're not so different from characters in a video game world. As citizens of society, we're part of a program we can't change, with strong restrictions on what we can and can't do. Wreck-It Ralph shows us that there are ways to find agency and individuality even when we lack a lot of freedoms. If we get with the program and accept that large parts of life are out of our control, we can work within those limitations to express our greatest potential. Oh, this place just got interesting. Before we go on, we want to talk a little bit about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a superb online learning community with thousands of classes about everything. Photography, illustration, music production. Click the link in the description below to get two months access to all classes for free. Video games, by design, are an exercise in limited agency. Unlike when you're watching a movie or reading a book, when you play a video game, you do have control over what happens. But that control is highly restricted. You get to choose between only those options that are given to you, within an artificial world governed by rigid rules. Maybe you can only move in four directions, or you have a small field of vision, or you have to follow a set storyline. In Wreck-It Ralph, the characters live within video games, and their lives have a similar range of restricted freedom. Don't die, because if you die outside your own game, you don't regenerate, ever. Game over. The variation inherent to game playing gives them more control than, say, the characters within a novel, whose every move is predetermined by the omnipotent author. Every weekday for 12 years, Harold would run at a rate of nearly 57 steps per block, or six blocks, barely catching the 817 Kronika bus. But they have to perform their given roles with a certain consistency to keep their games running smoothly and the arcade customers happy. The game's busted. I can fix it! Or else their game gets unplugged. We'll be put out of order for good. All my subjects will be homeless. And they can't change what's written in their code. My name's Ralph, and I'm a bad guy. So if they don't like what they're programmed to be, they've just got to find a way to cope. As fellow bad guys, we've all felt what you're feeling, and we've come to terms with it. It doesn't seem fair to us watching that Ralph just has to accept he's been written as a bad guy. And when we hear Calhoun is deeply affected by her tragic backstory. Sheepers, is she always this intense? It's not her fault. She's programmed with the most tragic backstory ever. Our first reaction may be that it's just that, a story. So this ought to be easily overcome. On some level, viewers are likely to feel these characters should be able to rewrite their own stories however they want to make themselves happy. But we ourselves don't necessarily enjoy such full-fledged autonomy either. In fact, the amount of agency most of us enjoy in society is somewhat analogous to being in a video game. We're limited by particular circumstances we're given, like our birthplace, our family, our social class, class or race, even aspects of our own personalities. But we do have the freedom to play within the constraints of this shared game. This manifests as limited agency in almost every aspect of our lives. For example, take your financial situation. It is in your control, but only to a degree. You don't get to choose how much money you start out with. You might inherit a fortune or start out broke. From there, the game allows certain available choices you can make to alter your finances. You can save, budget, apply for a job with a higher salary, invest, start a business, gamble, spend, and so on. Limited multiple choice agency. Wreck-It Ralph reveals how much our lives are like video games by making the kinds of restrictions we face more concrete and visual. 
And the movie ultimately concludes that a big part of becoming a functioning, successful adult in our kind of society is accepting what can't be changed. But we can't change who we are. And the sooner you accept that, the better off your game and your life will be. And then learning how to get creative and play well within the limitations of a video game life. Just keep telling yourself, I must win Ralph's medal or his life will be ruined. And have fun. Ralph is given a destiny that he doesn't want. He's programmed to be the bad guy, and the world around him is set up to make it impossible for him to be good. Yeah, naturally the guy with the name Fix-It Felix is the good guy. Definitely fixes stuff really well. But <laughs> uh, if you've got a magic hammer from your father, how hard can it be? Even his body is designed to make him the bad guy. Hey, why are your hands so freakishly big? I don't make things. I break things. Ralph rebels against these built-in limitations because being the villain is a pretty thankless job. Because you're just the bad guy who wrecks the building. And Ralph doesn't feel that this is his true self. Sure must be nice being the good guy. But when he abandons his game, everything starts to fall apart. Sweet mercy, without Ralph we're doomed. All the other characters in his game depend on Ralph to keep the game running and keep them from homelessness. So it becomes clear just how necessary his predetermined role really is. Thus, Ralph's story on one level is about accepting our duty in life. And besides, I've got a job to do too. It may not be as fancy as being president, but it's my duty. Ralph's role in his game may not be the one he'd choose, but he's the only one who can do it. And the most noble and selfless thing he can do is to play that role with relish, because the whole of the game relies on every one of its parts. Then I have moment of clarity. If Zangief is good guy, who'll crush man's skull like sparrow's egg between thighs? Many of us, like Ralph, in adolescence or early adulthood, may feel like rebelling against the program. We may lament that we weren't born with Felix's magic hammer, or that we don't like the game we're in and feel it ought to be written a different way. In reality, we don't all get to be the Felixes. And there's a lot we don't get to decide about the way we're perceived, and the roles available to us in society. Yet Ralph's instinct that just being bad isn't his full story is also valid and right, because his world has a very simplistic idea of what it means to be good and bad. Only good guys win medals, and you, sir, are no good guy. His friendship with Vanellope shows him that his bad guy nature brings special strengths when viewed in the right light. Look, kid, I tried to warn you. I, I, I can't make things, I just break. I love it. You do? Vanellope sees the creativity in Ralph's destruction. Come on, a work of art like this must be signed. And the hero in Ralph's villainy. I made it for you. Through her eyes, Ralph begins to love aspects of himself that he previously despised. Because if that little kid likes me, how bad can I be? Ralph comes to understand that the part of him that wrecks things is actually the part of him that can save the day. Ralph, where are you going? I got some wrecking to do. <laughs> Working with his pre-written code is how he's able to become the hero he always knew he was inside. I will never be good and that's not bad. There's no one I'd rather be than me. Using his inherent bad guy nature is a more sincere way for Ralph to be heroic, and it's far more meaningful than his original goal of winning a medal. So Ralph learns to follow his own formula for what being truly good means to him. Turns out I don't need a medal to tell me I'm a good guy. Ralph wouldn't have felt so alienated by his destiny in the first place if he weren't mistreated by his peers. You know, this angry little guy here <laughs> might be a lot happier if you put him up here with everyone else. His coworkers are all completely homogenous, and they all look down on anyone who isn't exactly like them. It's Ralph! Ah! He'll wreck the party! Hard to stem with. Get rid of him, Felix. Within the narrative of the game, Felix is the good guy and Ralph is the bad guy. But both are just playing parts, and Felix is no more essential to the game than Ralph is. I'm gonna wreck it! Oh, why?
Why do I fix everything I touch? Ralph fills a role that's necessary for the game to function, and once the others see how worse off they are without him, they learn a lesson about valuing difference. At the end of the movie, Ralph convinces the townspeople to let homeless outcasts from Unplugged Games join the cast of Fix-It Felix Jr. Their newfound inclusivity shows that they've internalized the lesson that there are diverse ways to be good. Labels not make you happy. Good. Bad. You must love you. While Ralph is initially excluded because his role isn't valued, Vanellope is excluded because she doesn't have a role at all. I mean, everyone here says I'm just a mistake and that I wasn't even supposed to exist. Vanellope is a glitch, so everyone in Sugar Rush assumes she was never meant to exist and has no destiny to contribute to the game. There's no way that I am racing with a glitch. Ah! You're breaking the glitch! But Vanellope has a deep confidence that this isn't true. I, I know I'm a racer. I can feel it in my code. And Vanellope's certainty in her fate is proven to be grounded in her true programming. If Vanellope was never meant to exist, then why is her picture on the side of the game console? All hail the rightful ruler of Sugar Rush. Princess Vanellope. The glitch was a result of King Candy's attempts to destroy the natural order of things. He's hacked into Sugar Rush and altered the program to put himself in power and make Vanellope look like a defect. But ultimately, the program and the natural order can't be overwritten. King Candy's defeat proves that things will always return to their rightful state. Interestingly, Vanellope's compulsion to challenge her systems dismissing her as a glitch reminds us of Ralph's deeper feeling that he had a heroic destiny to play. What we see in both of their plots is that getting with the program doesn't mean we have to passively accept everything that doesn't feel right. You will never be a racer because you're a glitch and that's all you'll ever be. The story implies if we feel instinctively that something in our society needs to be challenged, it may be that we've noticed an error. When it comes to our personal lives too, we have an inner compass telling telling us where we belong or what we're made to do. And if this doesn't quite fit with our external lives at the moment... I'm the bad guy and I live in the garbage. Cool! No, not cool. Unhygienic and lonely. It's up to us to reconcile that gap so we can perform our true duties and play our best with the cards we've been dealt. Making the most of what we've been given doesn't just mean what we're born with, either. Even after Vanellope is returned to her place as ruler, she still glitches, because her glitch has become a strength that she embraces. She uses it to her advantage in the race, and she begins to think of it as a superpower that makes her special. Look, the code may say I'm a princess, but I know who I really am, Ralph. I'm a racer with the greatest superpower ever. I was here, I was there. So the moral there is that our experiences, and especially our adversity, shape us as indelibly as our code or our DNA. We can turn the obstacles we've faced into positives, reminders of how strong we are. Vanellope couldn't control King Candy making her glitch any more than she could control how her code is written but she can control what she makes of these experiences in her future. Wreck-It Ralph is a movie about learning to accept your own limitations and the limitations of life itself. We all find ourselves within games governed by rules that may not be exactly how we'd like them. It's just as important to be okay with the aspects of your life that you can't change. I am bad, and that's good. I will never be good. And that's not bad. As it is to take control of the ones you can. And when you do both of these things, you're finally free to understand that you're valuable just for being whatever you are. The players love her, glitch and all. Just like I knew they would. This is Amy Vitali. Amy is a photojournalist who currently works as a contract photographer for National Geographic. And Amy teaches a class on documentary photography on Skillshare. Plant yourself in one place and be there for one hour. Don't move, just look around and let the life come to you. This is why we love Skillshare's service. The classes are taught by amazing, accomplished working professionals in design, photography, social media, business, entrepreneurship, and more. In fact, Skillshare has actually helped us at Screen Prism learn more about animation and design. 
they offer 20,000 classes about any skill you might want to learn, all for less than $10 a month. Right now, you can get two months access to all their classes for free. But that's only if you're one of the first 500 people to click the link in our description below. It's a great deal, so hurry up and don't miss out.